Welcome to season six of The Breakthrough Show, Breakthroughs Around the World, conversations with 40 guests from 40 different countries, acknowledging our similarities, honoring our differences, and celebrating our connection. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, the creator of The Breakthrough Show Network. And for season six, episode 27, I am thrilled to welcome a new friend to the show, someone who I was fortunate enough to hug in person recently, and that is um, a rare occasion for a virtual network. Uh, she's a mother with a vision, working toward creating communities of belonging. She's the co-host of Courageous Conversations on Race and Privilege, a star trainer, advocate for diversity in politics, and much more. Here to represent the country of Germany, please welcome my friend Doria Nashat to the show. <music> Welcome, Daria. Hello. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, we got a chance to meet in person, which is rare, especially being so far away. I have <laughs> a cup here from our meeting. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Was it was wonderful to see you and to meet you in person. You too. You too. Um, I'm excited for our conversation today um, because I mentioned to you that uh, my both my husband and I have family that's from Germany. And so I'm excited to dive in a little about that today. Um, so I would love to know what are some of your most favorite things about Germany that stick out for you? Oh, thank you. Yes, definitely. Language is one of the first things that come mm. to mind. Um, it just, I love language in general, but I also love the German language because in every language and especially in your mother tongue, you have all these words and concepts and ideas. And I grew up with a lot of German poetry and German songs. And I'm curious to hear how perhaps if you mm -hmm. had some of these in your childhood, you know, some of the fairy tales that are so typically German, I would say. Mm. And um, so language really is something that I treasure. And having lived abroad for many years, it's still something that I come back to. Mm. So uh, the German language, and it's not a very easy language right. for people, for foreigners to learn. So I'm also thankful that I was born into, you know, the German language. Yeah. So it is my mother tongue. Um, but especially the richness and the wealth of um, literature and poetry that I grew up with. That's something I really treasure. That's beautiful. I We've spoken to a few people this season who have languages that are rather challenging. And, um, and I think it's funny to me how many people... Um, struggled with their own language in learning it. And when we ask, when we get to our questions at the end, it, it's kind of funny that uh, many of them will say like a different language was their best class, but their home language was the one that they were challenged the most with. Was that the case? Were you ever, did you ever feel challenged with the German language growing up? Not when I, as a student or when really? I was younger, but having lived abroad and being having an, a very international family um, and speaking other languages as well, I sometimes get, you know, mixed up or I use a word that's specific, you know, in a different yeah. context, but because the concept fits so well. Um, but not when I was younger, I would say. Mm -hmm. I always loved language. I love that. I love that. I want to talk about food because so my aunt was from Germany um, and I mentioned, I think, to you when we met in person that my uncle was stationed in Germany and that's how they met. He was in the military and 
um, she would often go to, there was a German store here, um, not far from Connecticut in Rhode Island. Um, and she would go there to get different things that were German that, that she couldn't get elsewhere. And so that food was something that I think helped her hang on to that heritage, her German heritage. And so talk to me a little bit about what food is like there. And is it a big part of tradition and, and everyday life? Yes, definitely. Especially when you live abroad. Mm. Um, and let me guess what she was craving, probably bread, <laughs> which is the funny thing. Uh, when I, you know, when I go anywhere I go, or especially when I go home uh, at the moment, I don't live in Germany. And when I go and visit, it's one of the first things Mm. I buy is this dark rye bread with yeah. the you know with the crust and then it's very the texture is very um how do, shall I describe it it's a very heavy bread uh -huh. and then if it's when it's fresh and you have thick layer of butter on it and perhaps a little bit of salt I mean that to me is the most gourmet thing I can think yeah. of <laughs> having this rye bread, which is um, hard to come by in uh, in other countries, actually. And it's funny because I've never thought about bread with Germany, but this really explains my husband now. So his mother was German and then his father was French and my husband is bread. Like he just, he, he is all about the bread all the time. And now I know. Now I know yeah. And there's go. so many varieties. I mean, there's... Um, you know, the, obviously the whole wheat and all the different grains. And mm. uh, my kids love the pretzels, you know, mm. when you go to Germany. I think there's, yes. I read somewhere there's more than 200 different kinds of bread in Germany. Mm. So we're really the bread country and I could eat bread all day long. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, and that, that's one thing. That makes sense, though, too, now, because I um, we have a grocery store here. I don't know if you have it there or not. That's called Aldi. And um, they they rotate through different themes and they had a German theme one month. And we I went and got a whole bunch of pretzels like they were just I love pretzels. And so this was a big like they had pretzels everywhere during yeah. that month. Yeah, that's uh, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, another thing that. It's perhaps a bit strange, but it's potatoes, mm -hmm. but the right kind. <laughs> Again, I'm used to having this these potatoes that have a certain taste. And mm. wherever I go, I'm, I'm trying to find them. Uh, I don't even know the name right now. But having, you know, something that's very traditional, at least with my family at the time, we would on Saturdays, we would eat potatoes with just with butter and... Mm -hmm quark which is kind of the you know french um it's a, a white cheese mm. you know, it's in between yogurt and um what cream cheese i guess yeah. and it's also something that's uh, typical german mm. uh, it's hard to find in other countries so it's what you make the german cheesecake with oh, and, okay. um, so it's a very plain you know, meal, but it's, it's very typical that just the potatoes and, um, you know, cream cheese or this quark, uh, yogurt, um, and some butter and salt again. Mm. So, uh, that's something that I, uh, I'm really, I really love It's very simple. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's simple. Yes. But potatoes and bread and butter and cheese, like they're all such comforting foods. And I imagine like, what is the temperature like in Germany? Like it, does it fluctuate quite a bit or is it generally colder? Um, it's a very, you know, central European climate. So I grew up in Berlin. It depends again, you know, where you live in Germany, but it's the variation is not that great. So we have warm summers and um, used, we used to have a lot of snow in winter. So cold winters. Um, so we have four seasons. I grew up with the four seasons, which I love. Mm. And um, it's a moderate climate. No, no big heat waves um, yeah. and not freezing cold, very mm. moderate. 
That's, I don't know why I always pictured in my head that it was colder there, like much, much colder. I have no idea why I pictured that always. Um, but that's part of, you know, the interesting thing about this series that we've been doing is, um, you know, I think many of us have preconceived notions for how we think a country might be or how the people might behave or anything like that. And my mind has been blown several times. Anything that I thought might have been is it's just been taken care of now, which I love. Um, can you talk to me about the the people in general of Germany, about tradition, about um, maybe anything that that stands out to you about the people as a whole or the or the lifestyle so there are so many things i mean one one thing that um i really love as well is the and it's linked to the people it's it's the in part of the culture of the traditions is the seasonal celebrations mm. and a lot of it is obviously linked to christianity so there is different um ways of celebrating singing songs having traditions mm -hmm. around the seasonal changes and then around christmas especially we have a certain what we call a certain time advent you know the four weeks mm -hmm. leading up and the four sundays leading up to christmas right. which you know is a very dark time usually mm -hmm. and um i actually have something that is i think very typical uh, i have from my grandmother I don't know if you know these, these are little, um, you know, paper uh, creations that you uh -huh. put and you put a candle behind during the season, you know, the dark season before mm -hmm. Christmas. And you have, so they, they're shining through, you have the candle light coming through and then they have all these the, in this case, a lot of times from bi biblical stories, yeah. uh, figures, um, Sometimes you have these even for other fest, you know, other saint days, mm -hmm. St. Martin, St. Martin, for example, other um, moments in the year, but especially during the the cold and the, the dark season when you use a lot of candles, um, yeah. you have these. And another thing that we use a lot um, is these, these stars, paper stars. Oh. that you know people sit in the autumn and uh, prepare these or use these so these are some i kept from my grandmother actually and oh. i'm always excited to put the, put them up when the days get shorter and darker mm. um so i think in general that there is a lot of traditions a lot of ways of celebrating um seasons as in in many countries obviously um there is uh you know, people speak a lot of times about the punctuality of Germans, which, uh, you know, is something that uh, I remember, you know, my grandparents took very seriously. I think mm -hmm. it's also changing with, you know, younger generations and uh, new times and also more international, um, global world, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. some of these um, typical things um, are perhaps being reinvented. Mm -hmm. um, there is, in general, I grew up in Berlin and a lot of people say about Berlin that people are very direct mm -hmm. and sometimes too direct. <laughs> um, people are sometimes shocked uh, that people mm -hmm. don't you know, look into the mirror before they enter the streets. It's ah. not a very uh, fashion oriented uh, city, at least it didn't it didn't used to be when I lived there and grew up in the city. Um, and something that I found really interesting uh, living abroad now and having lived in different countries is how you relate to your neighbors. Mm. Um, so I grew up with my grandparents in a house that had been in our family for uh, two or three generations mm -hmm. and still people were not um, interacting in the streets, mm. which is something I really love uh, in the United States. Uh, you know, people start a conversation, people greet each other on the streets. Also in the Netherlands, it's very common. Um, it was people are more private, perhaps, mm. more reserved. That's something I noticed um from living i was at first totally surprised if a stranger would 
you know, greet me in the street yeah. <laughs> somewhere else <laughs> because I just, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't used to it. So mm. um, that's another thing that comes to mind when I think of, you know, how I, you know, what is typical for me growing up and especially having lived abroad, you, you get a different view on, on your own home country and home city. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that about our series this year, too, and getting to talk to people like yourself who are very well traveled. And um, one of the things that I've been asking is, you know, on top of what are the things that you love about your country? What are the things that you have seen in other countries that you've come to love that you would love to see adopted in your own country? So is there anything uh, like I hear you saying the you know, interaction with people is something like, is there anything else that you would love to see maybe adopted, not just in Germany, but around the world? Well, definitely greeting each other in the yeah. streets. And, and I do, I, it is changing. So when I go and visit family now, I, um, I notice people are more open. And again, mm. I think this is kind of a globalization effect, yeah. a positive effect of globalization and of, you know, having uh, visitors, more visitors perhaps than uh, we used to have, um, people coming from other countries. So that is definitely something I hope we can all, you know, learn from and practice because it, I think it makes such a big difference to, yeah. to just look someone in the eye and say, hi, um, you don't need to know the person, but mm -hmm. we're, you know, fellow travelers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think it just changes the atmosphere. Um, what else? I think there's so many things, <laughs> traditions. Mm -hmm. I, I think there is, um, I think sharing meals is something that I think is common in so many Mm. cultures and traditions and I think but because of you know now we're coming out of the pandemic of different mm -hmm. you know of difficult times let's say we have kind of withdrawn mm. and I hope that we can come back to gathering among friends and mm. even inviting people we might not know that well you know, mm. inviting even strangers, uh, neighbors we, we didn't meet yet. Yeah. Um, because I think it is really important, especially in these times. Yeah. Yeah. Some of that, some of that connection has gone. And I, and I was felt, I feel like I was witnessing it that even before the pandemic, like just a, a separation as the growth of social media, um, be was became more expansive. Um, and, and, you know, we're kind of under this guise of, of social media, but we're not like there's a disconnect that's happening in our day to day lives. And so I would I'm, I'm with you. I would love to see more um, of a connection again. And, and my hope, I guess, that we've all been through this pandemic is that we understand the importance maybe now more than ever of that connection, you know, yeah. um, and, and getting together yeah and 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 i think as you say i mean i think we have to be cautious and we have to be aware that perhaps sometimes the social me media yeah. makes us less social mm. in other contexts so you know to balance um our realities and to be mm. present um with others yeah real persons yeah. um <laughs> and not to kind of get lost in, in this virtual world. Yeah, which absolutely. Which can be very tempting. It can, it can, absolutely. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing, healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun.
letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every day for exclusive programming, special events, and a community to call home. Where we invite you to explore, change the way you look at and live your life, and go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com. I want to get into some of your um, experiences that you've been through in your life that have maybe helped to shape who you are or have given you a different perspective on the world. But I'd like to start this conversation um, kind of tying in uh, Germany as, as a whole. Um, so when I began to learn about um, World War II in school, and um, the Holocaust and things like that. That was a conversation. Um, I immediately, we would hear about Germany and, and I wanted to speak to my aunt about it. She was not comfortable having that conversation. She didn't want to talk to me about it. It would be just, you just didn't talk about it. Um, do you, what has been your perspective having lived in Germany, uh, like, do you feel any looming energy from those events then? Do you feel like there's people that are, that are still healing and, and dealing with all that happened so long ago? Like, just what has been your experience with that first? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the Holocaust and the you know, all the harm that, you know, Germany has caused mm. um, to others. I think the trauma lives on and I think we've been trying hard and still working on it to address the harm, to own the what we, what we did as a country, mm. um, to take responsibility. But I do think that the trauma lives on, unfortunately. I mean, it will live on for generations um, within Germany and obviously with all the countries and people affected by it. Um, I have a, a, a colleague who once said, you know, when I come to Berlin, it seems there is too much history there. There is mm. a certain heaviness to the city um, because it's very present when you walk through the streets. I mean, a lot of times you can still see you know, the bullet holes um, in these old buildings from Second World War. Mm. Um, so it's very present. And at the same time, I think Germany has made a great effort to take responsibility, to look at ways of coming to terms and dealing with the past mm. and um, there is all over in Berlin, you have, you know, memorial sites. Um, we have in school, you have a lot of focus and a lot of um, many, many hours during my history lessons were really um, focused on learning about, obviously, the Second World War, mm -hmm. the harm that Germany caused the Holocaust, um, the implications, the, the deep responsibility we all have to prevent this from happening again. And that's easier said than done because, you know, genocides are different ways, you know, harm is continuing, continuing. And we, I don't think we have been able altogether to stop these things from happening. Um, Fortunately, not at this scale. Mm -hmm. But I do feel a deep sense as well as a German uh, 
deep sense of responsibility mm. towards the future and towards being aware and being actively engaged mm. in preventing something like this from happening again. Right, right. I understand that that feeling of responsibility um, even when something just happens within a home, um, you can feel, you know, whether it's with parents or grandparents or things like that, you then feel this responsibility to not allow things like that to happen again. Um, is there, is there something that you can speak to about that sense of responsibility, but also not maybe wrapping yourself up in it so much that it it consumes you um if that makes sense like it because i think sometimes even i know that you um partic participate in conversations about race and privilege as well and i think so many people um feel that sense of responsibility to change things going forward but then there's like this there's so many other feelings that are involved from guilt that and then you're going but i didn't participate in that that wasn't me and like just about how do you balance the emotions because i know you're a feeler like i am how do you balance the things that you feel coming up about this and maybe being apart but also separating yourself at the same time or what does that look like for you yeah that's a good question <laughs> i think it's sometimes it's like a dance mm. it's you know it's a journey it's um it's living life and um I guess holding it both, holding it all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this, the heaviness, but also the light, you know, it, it all comes together, but I think that's the tapestry of life, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, combining it and holding it and holding the space is something that is a practice for me. So I'm, you know, sometimes I'm struggling, but I do feel that it's um, the responsibility is not something that restricts, but mm -hmm. it's something that makes me also much more appreciative and thankful for everything and, and perhaps even joyful, more joyful, mm -hmm. because I have this appreciation for, you know, the, the fantastic possibilities that I and we all have and um, using those in serving the greater good yeah. is just also such a joy. So yeah. I, I think there is no um, clear answer to that question, but I think it is a dance. It's always trying to hold everything and just also allow for that. There is also sometimes this tension, mm. the heaviness and the lightness, but it does belong together. Mm to allow for the tension that's oh my gosh i think so many of us are fearful of that tension we're scared of an argument that we might have or that there'll be something that that um you know will offend somebody or will just you know there's just so many like you're right it's not an easy it's no. not an easy answer. I don't even think there is an answer. I think you're, I love the analogy use of it being a dance. It's, a, you know, we're just, I think so many of us are just doing the best that we can with it and yeah. with what we know how to do in the moment. And I think that's assuming we all do the best we can yeah. is, is a very helpful, you know, state mm -hmm. of mind. Um, and then also, you know, being, compassionate to allow mm. for mistakes i think i will make mistakes you know i will offend people possibly i will and still i'm doing my best so there's you know there is no this is a journey and i yeah. think being on the journey is the most important thing mm. it's, it's the small steps it's it's being it's moving and it's trying so yeah 
Yeah, I love that. I know that you mentioned growing up in Berlin um, and many of us on the other side of the world are aware of the Berlin Wall and the falling of that and and but we we weren't there. We don't we don't know. Talk to me about the impact that that particular incident has had on your own life. Yeah. It's been one of the most powerful experiences um, I've had. Uh, so I grew up in uh, in the part in West Berlin, which is the part, you know, after the Second World War, the Allies decided to split up the capital. Mm. And um, so we had sectors. So we had an American sector, a French sector, a British sector, and then a, a Russian sector, which later became East Berlin. And... Um, so I, I grew up in a divided city. So we had, you know, I was in West Berlin, which um, meant I was kind of this, I lived on this island of freedom. And um, there was a wall surrounding uh, my part of the city. And when I would visit my uh, grandparents, um, they had a kind of a summer house in West Germany, as we would call it, uh, we had to, take you know drive to the border crossings or passports and then cross east germany by car and then again there was another wall and then we enter uh, west germany and i could never imagine that there would be no wall i mean there was just not we never talked about the wall um it was never something we discussed. It was just, that was our reality. It was our normal. So when in November of 1989, um, I came to school one morning and that was the 10th of November. So uh, the historic event had happened during the night. I came to school and people were saying, the wall is gone, the wall is gone. I couldn't believe believe it no one we couldn't believe it it was crazy we thought this this can't be true and i have a um i had a history teacher and he said well go this really is history is happening you have to leave you need to go and look go, go take the uh, the public transportation metro to the border crossings because they were opening up one after the other and so you know we all these uh, teenagers um took the metro and I remember these people, so many people, and we arrived at the border crossings in the city center. And I just saw these hundreds, thousands of people coming, you know, from East Berlin, coming over into my part, into West Berlin. And the joy and the, the energy of people, what I witnessed was a peaceful revolution. And there was such a sense of aliveness and, and such a sense of um, connectedness, of a shared humanity that I had never experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, I really, there were no strangers in those days, in that mm -hmm. moment. Um, we all felt as if we were brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I really, that's something, it's a moment I carry or an experience, I should say, uh, that I carry with me because I, I, I've i seen there were no masks mm -hmm. that day. You know, we all belong together. We were just one in this joy and in this historic uh, moment. It was unbelievable and it's really hard to describe because the the the, the sense it was really this visceral uh, experience of, of of freedom and joy and um such a sense of the energy was enormous enormous sense of pure freedom mm. i can i can hear the the level that this that this meant to you um and and to everybody and and the energy like you said that was created i remember a similar energy of people coming together after september 11th here in the united states um 
I'm, I think we're all experiencing a sort of welcome back energy since the pandemic. Um, and yet so many things have happened like this throughout time. And I think that we do, in a sense, continue to make shifts forward. But then I feel like maybe we forget really quickly that feeling. And and how how do you think how do you think we can harness this energy that we experience after things like the falling of the Berlin Wall? to maybe have more momentum behind moving forward is it do you think it's possible or how do we how do we keep ourselves from forgetting and and just moving through so quickly and maybe not taking as much to heart as we could great question i love it um it's something i'm thinking about quite a bit and mm -hmm. i do think it's easier than we think because but We need to allow for a moment or a, a space to go to that place in mm. us. And I sometimes wonder if we are willing and ready to mm. pause. I don't think we can get there when we are in our day-to-day -day routines on autopilot in the busyness of, of, of everything, of life. Um, I do think it's very easy, but it just takes one moment to remember that feeling. And I think we all have it, whether in small, you know, not everybody can experience such a mm. historic event as a, you know, a peaceful revolution and the fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, however, we all have these moments that we've experienced that that have this energy that feels like pure joy mm. we, we all have that have mo had moments mm. i think and when we go back to the moment we can get that energy back and we can trust that this is actually and this is something that i learned uh when i witnessed the fall of the berlin wall i think this is how we're meant to be mm -hmm. this is the the energy that comes when we allow ourselves to be truly human mm -hmm. so to me it's the purest form of being a human being mm -hmm. and so it is we all have it Mm -hmm. I think the question is, are we allowing ourselves to activate that? Or are we, do we, um, do we feel we deserve to be that happy? I sometimes wonder, and it has to do something with self-compassion mm. you know i think we all can be joyful and happy and that's our birthright mm. and we have it we carry that but we can't do it with the masks on i don't think that works yeah i love that um so many things to think about in just a little time and i wish that i had 12 hours to talk to every guest this season because there are so many, you know, my mind goes down the rabbit hole and I, I want to explore all the things, but I think you've really given people something to think about today um, and a place to start of how we can hold on to these very significant, um, like you said, events of pure joy in our lives and, and, ask yourself those questions of, are you deserving? Do you feel like you're deserving of that? Do you be, because it, you are, and we just need to tap into that somehow. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein. Für die Liebe. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein. Selbst mit verwundeter Seele. 
selbst mit gebrochenem Herzen. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein, denn die Welt ist schwer getroffen, nicht nur mein kleines Fleckchen Erde, wo ich mich meistens in Sicherheit wähne, wo ich mich meistens wohlfühle, sondern die ganze Welt, überall, jeden Tag. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein, denn wir brauchen mehr Licht, nicht noch mehr Tote, nicht noch mehr Macht, nicht noch mehr Bomben. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein, so dass unsere Kinder in Sicherheit sind, so dass unsere Freunde behütet sind, so dass unsere Grenzen offen sind. Für die Liebe stehe ich ein, selbst mit verwundeter Seele, selbst mit gebrochenem Herzen. Um, I want to get to our 10 fun questions to ask you today um, that we've been asking every guest this season. And um, we've had a little bit of fun with this and learning of the things, the little things that we might have in common and the little things that make us grateful that we're all so different at the same time um, kind of makes the world go round, I guess. So are you ready, Daria? I am. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Number one, what is your morning beverage of choice? A uh, hot milk with a shot of espresso. Hey, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Number two, when are you most productive? Sometime in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's me too. Yes. Um, number three, which season is your favorite? I love all seasons, yeah. but probably the warmer ones more than the colder ones. <laughs> all right. Um, number four, what is something that you're learning right now? Being hmm. instead of doing. That's a tough one. <laughs> Many of us are trying to figure that one out. Still learning. <laughs> Work in progress on that one over here. <laughs> Um, okay, number five. When you were in school, what were your best and worst subjects? So my best was probably history. Mm -hmm. And my worst, I would say, was probably arts and crafts. Really? I'm not a very patient person with small, detailed uh, things. We are, we are exactly opposite on this question. History <laughs> and geography were my worst, and I anything with the arts, I was happy to do that, but you know, the book work was not I my love favorite. the arts, like the yeah. drawing yeah, I yeah, love, yeah. <laughs> the painting, but not the small yeah. detailed um, things, the gluing uh, little things. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, number six, what scares you? I think my biggest fear is losing one of my children. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that as a mom, a hundred percent. Number seven, have you ever been in love? Yes. yes um, that's one of the things I will say, you know, about the, the Germans that I know, um, you know, they might be b very blunt and, and, you know, can seem harsh, but they, my aunt loved very hard. She, she, as, as, as maybe harsh as they are, they love with just as much force. So I, I got to witness yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, number eight, what inspires you? Nature's wisdom. Mm. I think there's so much to learn. I agree. I agree with that. Um, number nine, how do you enjoy your downtime or your free time? Hmm. I love to be silent in nature, walking in nature in silence. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, last one. Which culture do you deeply respect and or want to learn more about other than your own? I'm very curious to learn about so many different cultures. <laughs> uh, I think the one culture 
that I am still trying to learn more, most about is how to create a culture of nonviolence. Mm. Mm. I love that. I think that's a that's a universal. So many people have come on the show this season to sh- and the answer to this question has been like so many or all of them or I can't pick one. And so I think that 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 is something that can be adopted across any country, any mm-hmm. culture, you know, across the world. I love that. You survived. You did all 10 questions beautifully. <laughs> thank you well, for that. Thank you so much for having me on your show. So Absolutely. exciting. I'm really great, grateful to be here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Um, I want to put your link down at the bottom for everybody. And I also have it in the show notes as well. But um, is there anything that you would like to share about anything in particular that you're working on right now or that you um, just any final thoughts that you want to share any way that you would like to anything you'd like to leave our audience with today? I just enjoyed this very much. And I think it's fantastic that you're having this, creating this platform to to learn from each other. And I think to to explore and to find out what we have in common. I mean, there are differences, but in the end, you know, we have so much in common and creating these uh, conversations where we can see and feel and get together and learn from each other is just... uh, They're fantastic. So thank you very much, Jessica, for that. Absolutely. Thank you for being here, Daria. I appreciate you. And I appreciate on a personal note, our friendship. And, um, you know, I hope that our our meeting was the first of many and that we'll see each other again. Same here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you so much, Daria, for being here. Thank you to all of you for watching or listening around the world today. I'm your host, Jessica Dugas, and I want to remind you to make every day a great day for a breakthrough, and we'll see you next time.